the new option that we've introduced right here is actually what we refer to as a PCB moat design. So you actually see this little kind of trace yeah. layout. Mm -hmm. When we look inside that chassis, you'll actually see that there's a red LED that illuminates to actually show you the actual moat design. But this actual entire portion is its own, own separate PCB layer. So it's actually independent of the motherboard. What's the, what's the benefit? What's the, the main benefit is just like actually, you remember when we used to have the Supreme FX module? Yes. So it's the same concept. We were actually keeping the sound independent of the board. And oh, the that's main, for sound, okay. Yeah, okay. and that's really the main benefit, especially on these boards, right, where we know people are gonna overclock or you have multiple GPUs. You get actually a lot of additional interference that can go into this layer. Now, we haven't changed the codec. This is still the same exact Realtek codec, but with this design, we actually are able to hit all the full advertised specifications. So we can actually hit full 110 dB. Uh, we're actually able to drive more capacitance with the higher, actually 1500 UF cap. Um, it's actually really nice, it's clear. I think for us in terms of audio focus, this is probably going to be the highest end that we'll probably ever do on a board because realistically past <coughs> that, this type of design, it becomes too costly. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense in terms of trying to roll that out a lot. And for us, if you look at our Zonar lineup, the DG starts at almost sub 30 bucks mm -hmm. and the DG is better than any general that onboard sound station. over to this guy. Um, so one of the uh, additions that we have here in terms of that sound design that we're talking about, this one kind of sits a little bit above our current Zonar DX. Uh, this is actually the same type of actually sound design that we use in the Thunderbolt added card that we had for the Black Edition and for the Crosshair board, um, but it's in a USB DAC version. So this will be for the people that are looking for a really high-end audio solution. They also want specialized options in terms of noise cancellation and uh, calibration options for their microphone, but you also get analog inputs. So the cool thing is that outside of just using it for the PC, you can bring in any analog source that can benefit from the DAC this is improvements. More for, for audio professionals versus gamers, though. Oh uh, no, no, definitely. It's it's actually really focused in terms of the GUI. You'll see that we actually have options that are really attuned for the gamers, like for the guys that are using, you know, Ventrilo. Uh, they're using any type of the voice coins that are built into the, uh, the formula board. So you know, we spent a large amount of time doing kind of like guides and write-ups and different types of information for the community, especially for our ROG boards, but apply to our entire boards. You know, like when I've sent out the overclocking guides. Yeah. I send those actually out and I put those in the little forms for this version of CPU. You can see here we actually have an option that tells us, okay, we've got 39, 30K was overclocked to 4.1 gigahertz. You know, you know, it was downloaded five times. How many people have tried it? How many people like it? And what they can do is they can just go ahead and then they can download the file. This is BIOS settings or download or profile? Uh, correct. It's actually a full set of BIOS settings. But the cool part will be is that you can kind of benefit from a couple of different ways. One is that the user, let's say if they wanted to go ahead and just load this and compare this against the current settings to see, okay, maybe am I just not setting my OCP to kind of the right value? And they can now go ahead and go, look, okay, here's an overview of all the values. And I can see, okay, he was using this and I was using this. And either at this point, I could go ahead and just load his value and it'll permanently write into my UEFI, or I could use it I kind of as a compare and contrast metric. That's cool. So that's uh, so something that we're going to be spending a lot of time on. Of course, we have to build in a backend database that's going to be for this. We're hoping to have things finalized probably sometime in about a month. So this will roll out, and this is going to be kind of one of the additional kind of value incentives that we have for our RMG because we spend a huge amount of time with the options and the design there. And there's really only a handful of people that really know how to utilize them and benefit from them. So it's about helping to extend their understanding of what can you do with these boards. And, uh, we're now formally rolling out GPU Teak for all of our current graphics cards, so for both NVIDIA and AMD solutions. And some pretty cool stuff. We have got you know GPU-Z built into it. You've got um, custom voltage actually policies built in, so users can actually see how the voltage relates in terms of its level. Right. Most of the times when you usually make those adjustments, you don't usually have an idea whether it's a safe range or whether it's a kind of normal range or whether it's a, a higher kind of uh, more extreme range. So we'll have those options kind of all built in there. You have custom fan curves that you can go in and you can assign the policies for. So there's a lot of really nice stuff in that software. And like I said, it'll be a big focus for us from pretty much all the GPUs. CH, which is the entry level, uh, 269. Uh, features uh, the N2600 dual port and a three cell battery in this one. Uh, nice thin, very light chassis for a netbook. Uh, battery life on, on this anywhere from five to six hours. As far as performance, CPU cores are hardly changed, but it's got the better GPU. Right, right. it has a better GPU. There, there is a slide up took in CPU performance. <coughs> but just due to clock? Uh, no, they're, they've made some internal improvements, yeah. Um, but yes, the GPU is much better. I mean, you, you can actually do 720p, and depending upon the bit rate format, 1080p should not be a problem. So dual core Atom? Yeah. With a, with a beefed up GPU? Okay.
Then uh, step up is the 1025C at 299, uh, six cell battery. Mixed mode usage on battery life should be right around 10 hours. And Very cool. Of course, you, you can stretch that out depending upon power management settings and everything else. Um, all the, the, the new uh, EPCs uh, feature instant on technology, so uh, should be able to resume about three to five seconds on average now. So, and fairly long standby times. Uh, with the 6L, you're talking maybe 10. 10 days to 14 days or so. Standard spinning drives in there or any uh, SSD? Uh, no, it's standard uh, 320 gigabyte gotcha. uh, drives. So Then the uh, 1225C uh, series is a 12.1 inch format uh, with Cedar Trail with the N2800, which is the 1.86 dual core, uh, 1366 by 768 on the panel resolution. Uh, and then also in this chassis, we'll offer the uh, 1225B, uh, which features the AMD E450 Fusion with the uh, 6320 HD graphics. Are these particular ones uh, European models, the weird keyboard layout, the L-shaped enter key? Or is that how they're going to ship here too? No, no. Um, this, uh, the, these are kind of universal samples right now, so okay. you'll get the standard U.S. keyboard. Okay.